Okay, people. You know how I tell you I'm not going to be politically correct? Well, this video is definitely not going to be politically correct. <clears throat> I'm tired of these people who got their heads up their royal keisters with the stupid comments that they are making. They don't bother to check out and search into anything. All they do is they make a lot of noise and throw out a lot of insults towards me because I'm a strong constitutionist and I'm a patriot. They seem to want to tie slavery into patriotism. No, there's none there, none whatsoever. You want to tie slavery into something, you have to tie it into big business and politics. And I'm going to show you how and why. <clears throat> Our forefathers who wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution realized that they wrote in that every single person had unalienable rights endowed to them by the Creator. They knew that. They knew it in their hearts and souls. That was the truth. But yet, they had slaves. How come? What caused that problem? Well, you see, our forefathers had a dilemma that they did not know how to handle. They could not figure out how to handle this dilemma. It's called slavery and indentured service. They did not know how to correct the problem. Why was there a dilemma? Politics and big business. That's right. Political parties, politics, and big business. <clears throat> Before we go any further, a lot of you point out the three-fifths, the three-fifths in the Constitution. Do you ever bother to find out how it got that way? Most of you think, oh, the three-fifths, that came from the South. No, it did. The South wanted each and every person, no matter who they were or what status they were in, to count as one. The North said, no! If you have all those slaves and you have indentured servants down there, they shouldn't count at all. South said, no. So the North compromised and said, okay, we'll approve the Constitution, writing with it, say, in half. And the North, South still said, no. We can't accept that. They're not half a person. So somehow through all this political bickering between the North and the South, the South wanted one. The North wanted none. They ended up with three-fifths. It wasn't the South. It was the North. And it was politics only politics because the North was afraid the South would have too many representatives in Congress that the people who had slaves could control. Yes, politics had nothing to do with patriotism. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson many times expressed the dilemma they had. They knew slavery was wrong, but because of their economic and political situation, they needed it. Doesn't make it right. Oh, it's just as wrong. But it was politics and big business, not patriotism. Why do you think I'm against political parties? Because their loyalty stands with politics. Not you, the individual. Why do you think I'm against big business? Because they'll do anything they can to suppress you, the individual. Some of you think, oh, do you know we have slavery in this country today? We have two types of slavery. One, sex slaves all over this country. Two, employment slaves. What do I mean by employment slaves? I want you to think about this, you guys out there, each and every one of you. How many of you are in a job that barely's making your bills paid because of the economy and you have to accept that job? You have to work just to feed your family, just to make your bills. And sometimes you're not even doing that. You are a slave to your employment. And your employer knows that. You are selling yourself out as a slave. Slavery still exists, it's just got different words. 
these things have to end. I'm against any form of slavery in this country. Apparently none of you listen to my videos because I told you my grandmother, my own grandmother, was owned by my grandfather's family. They went to Germany when she was a young girl after World War I and bought her. Brought her back to this country, lied about who she was, third grade, put it to work in a shoe factory, putting shoes in boxes. My mother never had anything greater than half a third grade education because she was the daughter of that woman they owned. I remember when I was a boy how she was scrubbing floors in Brooklyn apartment buildings. The one we lived in. And she told me that's how she earned the money and everything that they got. She never did get money. They got to live in their apartment. And when she went around in Brooklyn where we lived, she could get anything she wanted without money. And they always said, tell Frank that so-and-so gave it to you. Tell Frank that you got this from. Yes, Frank Fester, an Italian. <clears throat> Slavery has been in this country for years. And it is a dilemma. Our forefathers knew that slavery was a dilemma. They knew when they wrote the Declaration of Independence that slavery, slavery and the treating of the American Indians were wrong. The Indians chose the British side. That's why. <clears throat> the vengeance that followed. <clears throat> but they knew it was wrong. But they had the dilemma how to fix it. Politics said no, and economic big business said you will keep them. How do you handle that? Look at what politics and big business controls today. You think you're any better than our forefathers? Each and every one of you has got to understand the dilemma they were in. And they didn't know how to handle it. And they were hoping that their grandchildren, with what the guidelines they set, would be able to handle that problem. Unfortunately, as far as 1860-something, we had not yet figured out how to handle it. Now, so we ended up with the Civil War. Britain encouraged the South because they wanted to break up the United States of America because we were a new political system never seen a government to assist the people and that everyone is created equal no we can't have that so there was a civil war because we had not yet figured out how to handle the problem that our forefathers seen and they had the same dilemma they could not figure out how to handle slavery they had the political and the economic dilemma and none of them had the strength or will to stand up and say, it is wrong, we're not going to do it any longer. So, a hundred years later, we fought a civil war. And even then, it wasn't totally corrected. Martha Luther King Jr., his walks wasn't because people were treated equal. His marches weren't because everyone was the same in the eyes of the government. No, we still had not learned how to handle that dilemma. To this very day, there are people who cannot. Now, let me show you something. See that arm? That's not white. That's beige. It's a form of brown. Just like every other person in this country, we all have a form of brown as the color of our skin. And like I say, just because you got a better tan than me, doesn't make you any different than me. It's what you say and what you do that matters to me. Because I see each and every one of you as an individual. And I will defend your rights to believe whatever you want. I don't care if it is a extreme leftist or extreme rightist. I don't care. I will defend your rights to believe it with my life. But 
let you try to force that onto anybody else, I will be the first person in line to fight you. Because everybody is equal. And everybody has a right to believe what they wish to believe. You don't have the right to force it on to anybody else. How you live inside your house is your business. And nobody else's. And here's the way I look at this. You can live inside your house the way you wish. If I don't like it, there's the door. But, understand that door works two ways. You live inside your house the way you wish. But when you go through that door, everybody is equal. When you hit that public street, everybody is treated equal and they all have the same rights. I truly believe a man's home is his castle, his kingdom. But when he goes outside that door, he's in the United States of America. And each and every one of you, men, women, and children, are all equal and you all have the same rights. It's up to the parents to ensure that their children understand that. Just like it's up to the parents to ensure that the children get a proper education. Schooling is only part of it. What you are taught at home is the other part. So the thing about the patriots and slavery is this. Our forefathers, when they wrote the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, as well as the Articles of Confederation, realized slavery was wrong. But because of the political feel and the economic monsters, they couldn't figure out how to handle it what to do. Again, politics and money is what made slavery after the Declaration of Independence. Nothing else. Politics put the three-fifths in the Constitution. It didn't come from the South. It came from the North. Yes, they didn't want one-on-one -on -one count for everybody because they felt the South would have too many they would have too much control in the House of Representatives. Bottom line is, everything negative that you could point out about slavery is strictly political and economic. Had nothing to do with the patriotic cause, had nothing to do with the writing of the Constitution, had nothing to do with the Declaration of Independence. It had to do with the dilemma our forefathers could not figure out how to handle because of politics and big money. The very same dilemma that we face today. The very same dilemma that put us in a civil war. But us today, we have to understand, we are equal. And we must stand up for that, for each and every one of us. And I will defend each and every one of your rights. That is where I am. Don't you ever, ever, you jerks with your heads up your butt, ever accuse me of supporting any form of slavery when I personally experienced the terror of it through my grandmother. 